Hi everyone, welcome back to our Verb Conjugator series. In the last video we looked at putting together a dictionary and using that dictionary to derive some of the basic forms, sort verbs according to conjugation and endings, and so on. In this video we're going to start looking at how to take those stems and those conjugation subclass endings and put them together within our main verb conjugator table. So I did actually make a 20 minute video going through step by step, me and putting all the formulas and so on and so forth, but that was time consuming and it's a nightmare to edit. So for this video, I'm just gonna show you the finished product, explain some of the formulas, and uh, yeah, by the end of the video, you should have at least a somewhat working verb conjugator table. Also shout out to Diane Dante, I hope I'm pronouncing your username correctly there, for uh, recommending the Sill IPA keyboard. It has made inputting dental fricatives a world easier than going and finding them and copying and pasting. So this is where we got to in the last video. We have the English infinitive, agere infinitive. We have the principal parts for the citation form. We have to specify whether or not the verb is regular. Then we wrote formulas to determine from the infinitive endings which subclass the verb belong to and we did the same thing for the stems to remove the infinitive ending and find our stems. So what I've done is make an endings sheet which contains all of the endings for all of the subclasses in the active present and future infinitive singular and present forms. So for the verb aras we have the infinitive ending arav first singular aras, second singular arave, and so on. Now what we need to do is take the stem that we worked at in the last video and add the endings that I've put in this video. The easiest way to do this, I find, is to import the stem from the dictionary into your main verb conjugator sheet. The way we import it from the other sheet is to use the index formula. I realize this looks very big and scary, so I'm gonna walk you through it. In this cell, I want to find a value within an array. So the array is where you're looking for your information. So in this case, because the stem is found in the dictionary sheet, I'm saying look in the dictionary, then find me the row which matches the verb to create, and then I want you to find me the column that corresponds to the stem. Another helpful thing to do is to import the subclasses. So the only thing that you have to change there is instead of finding the stem, column, you have to find the subclass column. I also realized that I forgot to put the infinitive forms in in my last video, so I've put them in now. And to add the stem and the endings, we're going to use this index function again. Take that stem and add the appropriate ending in the ending sheet, which matches the subclass and which matches the present infinitive. Why is this important? Because it means that you can use the same formula and essentially drag it to apply it to the future. So to import the stem, I'm saying look in the dictionary, find the row of the verb, and then find the stem column. But here I'm being a bit more precise. So why am I specifying two values? Well, it's because in the ending sheet, we have rows with the tense, and then below that we have rows with the infinitive and person and number endings. So in this row we have the infinitive twice, the first singular twice, the second singular twice, and so on. The only difference between av as the infinitive and eate as the infinitive is that one of them is the present infinitive and the other is the future infinitive. This is why we specify within this formula that we want to find the ending that matches both the tense and the infinitive or person number ending. So all you have to do then for the future is to change the formula a little bit so that it's no longer finding you the present infinitive, but it's finding you the future infinitive. If you're wondering why the dollar sign is in certain places, it's because it fixes the formula. If you drag a formula in Excel, then the cell that it refers to will drag along with it. So if you fix the referred cell, you can drag this all the way down and it will always pull from the stem. And that's it for this video. See you next time.